I wanted to kind of go through some of the settings for the different modes. So uh, what you're looking at right now is my Fusion hotspot. And this is online and I use it all the time. And we're going to jump through these settings and then I'm going to change it over to the other modes and we'll take a look at those settings and so on and so forth. What I'm not going to do in this video is go through how to install Pystar. This is going to go into a little more of the detail on the individual modes and some of the cool things you can do, which may or may not be obvious with Pystar straight out of the box. So this is Fusion. Like I said, this is running on a Raspberry Pi 2B, some old hardware that I have laying around. And for my purposes, it works great. I've renamed mine and I, I tend to keep my hotspots named what they are so I can remember which one I'm supposed to be talking to. You can rename it to anything you want. You're going to set up MMDVM host. The next thing that you're going to set up is either simplex node or uh, duplex repeater. Simplex node is the easiest. If you have a single radio hotspot, then that's what you're going to use. This happens to be on a two radio hotspot, so I have it set up as a repeater. It works exactly like a repeater with an offset up, down, 5 megahertz, 0.6 megahertz, whatever you want to do, it's up to you. You need to stay in the correct band, of course, for using hotspots at low power and not walk over the top of satellite band or anything else. Then right below it, you have whatever kind of modes you want to use for that particular setup. First thing first, I see a lot of people asking the question, can I run multiple modes at one time? Absolutely, yes, you can. You can turn on every stinking little clicky button there is right there, and it will kind of work. But keep in mind that the radio, the radio has to go through all these modes. You only have one radio. You don't have six or eight different radios in this hotspot. So if there's someone talking on DMR because you connected to America Link, for example, which is a very, very busy talk group, it may never get to the other modes because the people talking on America Link are going to keep it tied up. Be aware of that kind of thing. If you have 30 Charlie turned on on D-Star, same kind of deal. Very busy reflector. So you may never leave D-Star. It's best, in my opinion, if you're going to run multiple modes, run multiple hotspots, or be very comfortable with flipping them on and off, which is easy enough to do. So we're going to start out with YSF. That's all I have turned on. Let's go look at the YSF settings. There's your host name. I've called this one Fusion. Your call sign, your DMR ID. This will be more important later on, but you might as well put it in there. Make sure you use yours and not mine. Some of the rest of this is really self-explanatory. This is the system fusion settings here. At the moment, I had it set to none. I'm actually going to update this right now while we're looking at it. And there are a lot of things. So be glad we're not going to an XLS reflector. I'm going to set this to start up on toads every time this reboots. And then I'm going to change that. Um, auto AP. And so what auto AP means is that if it can't connect to Wi-Fi because it's never seen the Wi-Fi, it will come up as an access point and it will say Pi Star or whatever you've named it. And then you can connect to it and do setup on it and change it to whatever that Wi Fi should be. Um, if you never move your Pi Star out of your house, turn off Auto AP after you've got this thing set. There's no reason for it to be on. UPnP, this is universal plug and play. This will make changes to your router to allow access to your hotspot from outside your network over the internet potentially turn this off unless you specifically know that you have a need for it because 99% of us don't have a need for this. This is our remote access user ID and also for SSH command line login. The username is hard coded to Pystar, so you can change the password here and you should. The default password for Pystar is Raspberry. You want to change this to a password that you know and is a sufficient administrative password. This is the admin page. This is like a more detailed dashboard for Pystar, and it shows us what services are on on our Pystar based on green. Um, if I want to change reflector I'm linked to through my Pystar, I can change it here. On Fusion Radios, you can also change it through your Fusion Radio, and it will force the change. But if you're at the Pystar dashboard, you can change it right here with link and unlink. As this is your Pystar in your house, there's no reason to unlink. You're not tying up a repeater for an entire region. 
This is only in your house. And this shows what activity we've had and who's connected in the last uh, little bit. We can go into config again and take a quick look at expert. And in expert, there's a couple things you can, can see here. The first and foremost is SSH access. So we're going to log on real quick. And so we're now we're logged into my PyStar instance on the command line. So we can run this sudo pystar dash find. I think it's find modem. Yep. And it will come back. It's pondering. It's talking to my hardware at the moment and tell me what kind of modem I have. So now, if I didn't know, that's what I have. This particular piece of hardware, and this is the glue that talks between your radio and the Raspberry Pi computer, is this MMDVM board or your modem. Multi-mode digital voice modem, MMDVM board. And it tells me that I have an HS dual hat with a TXCO of 14.7 megahertz. If you're a Linux guy from here, I can actually do complete operating system updates and install other apps to this um, system if I want to. So we're going to get out of here and we'll jump back to our menu. We can tweak individual settings, very detailed settings for the different modes. So let's go take a look at the YSF gateway mode. Don't fool with this stuff unless you understand what you're doing or you'll break it. You know, the beauty of it is with PyStar, you can just reinstall it to the SD card and start over. It's not the end of the world if you bust it. But try not to screw with this stuff because you will most likely dork up your PyStar. If you know what these things are, fine. But if you don't, don't touch them. There's settings. You know, we can adjust a lot of the same settings you can do through the default admin interface. And this goes for all the modes. I'm showing you Fusion. But all the modes have their own specific settings. And I can come in here and I can tweak them. Some of these need to match specific things. So, for example... This hotspot is getting the name of the reflector that I pointed it at, which is US Toads. It's getting that out of the Etsy YSF hosts file, which is getting downloaded from PyStar. There's a cron that runs daily. I could change that and say, Jim, one setting that I do want to talk about is the transmission offset. You'll see a column over on the right hand side that says BER, bit error rate. That is how well your radio is talking to PyStar and what kind of percentage of data is getting dropped between the radio's data mode and your PyStar. You want to keep that as low as possible. So if your BER is green, sunshine and puppies, man, all good. If your BER is not in the green, then you want to come into the expert settings under MMDVM host in here and you want to play with the RF offset. This is a integer number. You can, it can be a negative integer or a positive integer. Play with it in probably 50 um, increments. Start with the, RF off, R, the RX offset and make a change, make a test transmission, look at the BER on the dashboard. So when I'm adjusting this for a specific box, what I will do is I will come up here and I will open the dashboard in a separate tab so I can see the BER of my last transmission, and then I can just pop back and forth to this screen and that screen by tabbing back and forth. And let's look at some of the other settings. A lot of this stuff is almost identical to Fusion, except it's specific for that mode. So if we turn on DSTAR and we apply that change, so now I have YSF and DSTAR enabled. Okay, we've updated. I didn't talk about this earlier. We do have two other things, RF hang time and net hang time. RF hang time is how long it's going to stay in this mode after a conversation. Net hang time, this is basically how long it's going to stay locked on whatever you were doing. 20 seconds, so you may want to change that to less or more. If you are using multiple modes on one hotspot, you're going to want to set that a lot lower. So I turned on D-Star. We'll jump down to the D-Star functions. None of this has changed. All of this is exactly the same settings, but now we have DSTAR configuration. What it's going to do is it's going to put in your RPT1 and your RPT2 for you by default. I'm on UHF, so this is the B module. I'll get the right word. I was going to say dingus, but module's the right word. We do need to change this to American English, so we will. We can have um, the DSTAR mode will give us time announcements. I'm going to blank that. Exactly like YSF, I can have this connect to a specific reflector. 
Um, unlike the YSF mode, you can actually type which one you want. So if I wanted to connect to ref 334C, which I think is Alabama link, I can type it in. The other way you can do it is, of course, by, you know, scrolling through it all. Time announcements, call sign routing. So if you know my specific call sign, this would allow you to connect to my D-Star radio specifically via my hotspot. It would announce that KN4YCD is live on this particular hotspot. So if I had a friend trying to hit me directly, he could. It participates in call sign routing. These are cross modes, and these work very well. I've played with these extensively. So if you only have a fusion radio and you want to link into DMR, you can. You can also link from your fusion radio into NXDN reflectors and into P25 reflectors. If you only have a DMR radio, as I know a lot of people do, you can connect into YSF reflectors, aka Toad's Digital Network, for example. You can connect from your DMR radio to NXDN. Here's the DMR config. I'm kind of a Brandmeister guy, so I would come down here and I would pick Brandmeister and I'd pick a reflector and I'd put in my secret Brandmeister password. And I'm going to turn all that on. And there's all my information for Brandmeister. I'm not, I do not use any of these others at this time. So I can't speak to settings for these. So that's the basic settings for um, Brandmeister. I would change this to United States. I thought I did that. So for example, if you have only a DMR radio and you want to talk to YSF, you want that on. And then there's your Brandmeister master. And if you, if you have a DMR radio, you've probably already done this part. P25, pretty straightforward. You're going to set a startup post and a NAC. You can also do the crossovers with that. We're not going to get into that because these are not very common modes. Same with NXDN. These two, um, they act similar to DMR. They work similar to DMR. There are talk groups. The big difference with P25 and NXDN is on P25, you have a NAC, network access code. For amateur radio, that's going to be 293. Um, and on NXDN, same kind of deal. You see we have different talk groups and reflectors. Same with P25. This is P25 phase one, by the way. Um, with NXDN, we have a RAN. And with P25, we have the NAC. That's a walkthrough of all the different digital modes in PyStar. The big takeaway here is that a lot of the settings are the same. You're just going to make tweaks for each individual mode. Yes, you can run multiple modes, not recommended, but you can on one Pi Star install at a time. I'd recommend separate Raspberry Pis to do it, not one. Anyway, guys, if you need to find me and talk to me, hit me up in Toad's Discord. I'm usually hanging out in there all the time. Obviously, feel free to leave comments in the diddly bop down below. Please give me a thumbs up if you thought this video was reasonably useful for you. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed and ring that bell to make sure you get notified whenever I post any new content. Fellas, thanks. Have a great day.